Vibhisa kam becomes cha. Hey Krishna Karana Sindhu Dinu Bando Jagatpate. Gopesha Gopika Kanta Rara Kanta Namostute. Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavani Shure. Rishabhanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye. Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyas Cha Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha. Patitanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Adaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gora Bhakta Vinda. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. Reading from the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 2, Contents of the Gita Summarized, Text 57. So I don't know if you have books. Everyone should have a Bhagavad Gita. So it's 257. That's Chapter 2, Text 57. In my book, it's page 145. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yasavatra na bishni has. Yasavatra na bishni has. Tat tat prapya shuba shubam. Tat tat prapya shuba shubam. Nabi nandati nadresti. Nabi nandati nadresti. Asya Pragya Pratishtita. Asya Pragya Pratishtita. Yasavatra Nabhisnehas. Yasavatra Nabhisnehas. Tat tat prapya subhashubam. Tat tat prapya subhashubam. Dinandati nadresti. Nabinandati nadvesti. Somebody chant. Yes, sir, but Ranabisnehas. Yes, sir, but Ranabinehas. That that prapya shubashubam. That prapya shubashubam. Nabinandati nad pasty. Nabinandati nad pasty. Tasya pratishtita. Tasya pratna pratishtita. Yahasarvatra nabi snehas. Yahasarvatra nabi snehas. Tatat prapya shubashubam. Tatat prapya shubashubam. Nabinandatina dveshti. Nabinandatina dveshti. Tasya pradnya pratishtita. Tasya pradnya pratishtita. Yaha sarvatra nabhis neas. Yaha sarvatra nabhis neas. Tatat prapya shubashubam. Tatat prapya shubha shubha. Nabinandati nadveshti. Nabinandati nadveshti. Tasya pragnya pratishtitaha. Tasya pragnya pratishtitaha. Ya sharvatrana avineshas. Ya sharvatrana visnehas. Tatat prapya shubha shubha. Tatat prapya shubha shubham. Nabinandati nadrishti. Nabinandati natveshti. Tashya pragna prathishtita. 
तस्य प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता या या वन हु वन हु सर्वत्र सर्वत्र एवरीवेयर एवरीवेयर अनि बेशनेहा अनि अनि बेशनेहा Yes, not bish neha. Sorry, without affection. Without, without affection. Thought. Thought. That. That. Thought. That. 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 Propya. Propya. Achieving. Achieving. Shuba. Shuba. Good. Good. Ashubam. Ashubam. Evil. Evil. Na. Na. Never. Never. Abhinandati. Abhinandati. Praises. Praises. Na. 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 Never. Never. Dresti. Dresti. Envies. Envies. Tasya. Tasya. Is. Is. Pragya. Pragya. Perfect. Actually, perfect, perfect knowledge. knowledge. Sorry. Perfect, perfect knowledge. Pratistita. Pratistita. Fixed. 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 In the material world, one who is unaffected by whatever good or evil he may obtain, neither praising it nor despising it, is firmly fixed in perfect knowledge. Purport. There is always some upheaval in the material world, which may be good or evil. One who is not agitated by such material upheavals, who is unaffected by good and evil, is to be understood to be fixed in Krishna consciousness. As long as one is in the material world, there is always the possibility of good and evil. Because this world is full of duality, but one who is fixed in Krishna consciousness is not affected by good and evil, because he is simply concerned with Krishna, who is all good, absolute. Such consciousness in Krishna's in Krishna situates one in a perfect transcendental position called technically samadhi. Translation again. It's a short purport. I'll wind up reading another verse, most likely. But in the material world, one who is unaffected by whatever good or evil he may obtain, neither praising it nor despising it, is firmly fixed in perfect knowledge. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pachani Nivase Sasunyavari Prasthacha so this is someone who is Krishna conscious. Someone who is Krishna conscious sees uh, everything as coming from Krishna. He sees everything as Krishna's mercy. He's, if it's good or bad, he doesn't see it as good or bad. It's coming from Krishna. If it's if it's something bad is happening, he thinks, well, I must have done something in a past life to deserve this, or I must have done something in this life to deserve it. He doesn't, he doesn't think it's why me? Why is all these things happening to me? <clears throat> if something good comes. He might think uh, Krishna's being kind to him. He may, but whether it's good or bad materially, it doesn't really affect him. He just goes on, just like in the, uh, what verse is it? In, 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 the, in the Bhagavad Gita where, it says, Matras Pashas to count the Ashit Ocean of Sukaduka die. No, it's in this chapter. Agama Payanonit Yastam to Tikshas for Barato, son of Kunti, the non permanent appearance of happiness and distress and the disappearance of due cause, are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. They arise from sense perception of Sky and Barato. So it's the same that the person in knowledge, he's not affected by happiness and distress, he's not affected by good or evil. Whatever situation he's in, he goes on doing what he has to do to serve Krishna, try to please Krishna. That's it. 
and he's not upset when evil happens. It's just a temporary situation. It's a temporary situation, very temporary. It's just a material situation. Even if it lasts for the whole life, it's still a temporary situation. There was an old sage who had, it was, he was a hairy sage. He had a lot of hair all over his body. And after every day of Brahma, one hair would fall out. Of course, the day of Brahma is millions and millions of years. And every one hair would fall out. And when all the hairs fall out of his body, he would die. So it was a very, very long time he lived. And they wanted to, he had disciples and they wanted to build him a hut. He didn't even slept outside. And they wanted to build him a hut. And he said, why? I'm only here temporarily. So this is somebody who's here for billions of years and thinking it's just temporary. Just like with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when I believe it was Mukunda who committed some offense and Lord Chaitanya would not see him again. And then uh, devotees were pleading on the part of Mukunda. And, and finally, Lord Chaitanya said, after so many millions of births, then he can get my association. Mukunda was ecstatic because he knew in the future he'd get Lord Chaitanya's association once again. So he was ecstatic about that. So it doesn't matter how temporary, I mean, how long it is in the material world, it's all temporary. So similarly for the devotee, happiness, distress, it doesn't matter. It's just a temporary situation. It's there and it's gone. You can't always be happy and you can't always be distressed. You know, you, you can't. You might think you're, when you are distressed, generally you think you're, you're you know, it's, it never ends. I'm always distressed, but it does end. You'll become happy again, even if you don't want to be happy. Of course, you might think, why doesn't someone want to be happy? But just given that as an example, that you can't be always distressed. Even if the situation is bad, these things are going to happen and you're going to, they're going to be pretty good. And then they're going to be bad again. Then they're going to be good. That's the nature of the material world. So why should you care whether it's good or evil, whether it's good or bad? Why should you care? What's the difference? Let me just continue serving Krishna. That's the only real thing in life anyway. All these other things are, are, are there and are gone. Chapala Sukha, flickering happiness. So what we want to do is try to engage in Krishna's service in spite of all these difficulties, continue serving. Then Krishna get, becomes very pleased. This is a really nice devotee. It doesn't matter how bad things are or how good things are, because even in good, you may forget Krishna. You know, now I can enjoy. Everything is so wonderful. But you have to do your service. That's what we have to learn how to do. Okay, I'm going to read another verse. But before I read another verse, anyone have any comments, questions, or anything else they'd like to say about what I said or read? We don't have too many people on this, do we? Or maybe there's more, I see. Let us see here. What does it say? Oh, 13. Okay. And of course, nobody has their cameras on because uh, I don't know what they don't. Not the Gopal usually does, but now maybe. No questions, does. but we agree with you. Everything you said is right. <laughs> okay. So now what's the problem then? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, the problem is we don't always act on it. I mean, yes, it's philosophically co correct. But now how do I apply it to my life? Something bad is going to happen. I got to continue doing my devotional service. Something good happens, I got to continue doing my devotional service. I got to be responsible for that. So true, yes. So this is, so first thing is knowledge. Knowledge, so we have the knowledge. Does anyone disagree with what I said? No, I don't. Well, I know you don't because you already told me <laughs> that. Nobody else is saying anything, so I don't even know if they're there because they don't show the picture. Nanda Gopal knows there, I could see that. Silence means yes. <laughs> Yeah, probably, or maybe no. It means one or the other. You know, it means you don't want to get the person who's speaking upset. Uh, I think everyone agrees with what I said. That's how we have to behave. So that's called jnana knowledge. Now, vijnana, that is applying it to our lives. That's practical application of the knowledge. 
And that's what we really have to come to. We don't want to just be gyanis and we know all this, we know all that, but then when it comes to actually applying it to our life, we don't do that. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's like a little kid, he's not afraid, I'm not afraid. We had a little kid here once and he's in, and I had these uh, Ravana ears. You put them on your ears and they stick up. They look like Ravana, you know? So there's this kid here, he's probably around eight years old and he's saying how he wouldn't be afraid of Ravana. He wouldn't put, so he didn't know, but we're talking, we're sitting on the couch and his father's there, I'm there. And I put these ears on. And then when he sees me with those ears, ah! you know? so he says, he says all this stuff really nice. But, but when it comes to actually applying it, it, he, it didn't work. So similarly, we know how we should be detached. We know how we shouldn't be disturbed. We know how we should do our service in happiness and distress, in, in good or in evil. We know all this, but now we have to come to the platform of Vigyana, of applying it to our life. And, and that means no matter what happens, we continue serving Krishna. And you could tell in, in time, people who are doing it for so many years, that they've, they've, not that they've never had any problems, but in spite of all the problems, they're still engaged in devotional service. You know, they're saying time will tell. So in time, we, we, we see, you know, some people fall uh, on the, by the wayside, you know, in time. So we have to keep trying. And, and you know, don't give up. That's it. So, but you can at least try to think of this philosophy when there is some difficulty or when there is ex such ex ex material happiness, you know, think of it, think of Krishna, think of how you don't let it interfere with your service. Then you'll be applying it to your life. Okay, any, no other comments or questions? Last chance for this verse. I think I got, a, got three people I can see. I don't think anybody else. Uh, let me just see. We, we, we're eventually surrendering. This is called surrender. Is letting people see you. <laughs> and, and for most people, it's too hard to do. Okay, I'm gonna look, now that I have some people I can look at, I'm gonna change my view to the gallery view. And that's much better. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna read the next verse. Uh, we're not gonna all chant it, but uh, I'll, I'll read it, you can respond, but then I'll just read the word for word. Yada samharate chayam. Yada samharate chayam. Indriyam <laughs> Yada <laughs> When? When? I, I just like to ask somebody, I'm hearing an echo of everything I say, and it's driving me crazy. Is there a reason it's happening? Suraj, any idea? Someone might have put on speaker on. Or might have put a speaker on him. Yeah. If anyway, I, after I do the word for word, everyone can shut off their the. They don't have to shut it off yet, but after the word for word, Saharate, 
Somebody winds up. Winds up. up. Cha. 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 Also. Also. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. Kurma. 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 Tortoise. 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 Angani. Angani. Limbs. Limbs. Eva. 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 Like. 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 Sarvashaha. Sarvashaha. All together. All together. Indriyani. Indriyani. Senses. Senses. Indriyar Arkebyaha. India, from the sense object, from the sense object, Asya, Asya, Is, Pragya, Pragya, Consciousness, Consciousness, Pratishtika, Pratishtika, Fixed, Fixed, So very much shut off your sound. See if I can get rid of my echo. Hey, no echo. That was it. Thank you. One who is able to withdraw his senses from sense objects as the tortoise draws its limbs within the shell is firmly fixed in perfect consciousness. Purport. The test of a yogi, devotee, or self-realized soul is that he is able to control the senses according to his plan. Wow, that's really... Uh, that sentence says uh, a lot. Uh, the test of a yogi or devotee or self-realized soul is that he is able to control the senses according to his plan. Okay, what's my plan? My plan is I'm going to get up. I'm not going to overeat. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Now I have all this plan. And then, then I'm eating and, oh, this tastes so good. And I eat more than I know when I'm supposed to. So a yogi doesn't do that. A yogi has a plan. And he follows that plan. He uses his senses for a devotee because it gives three examples, yogi, devotee, or self-realized soul. So let's use the devotee because that's what we're trying to become as devotees. So a devotee has a plan. I'm going to do this service. I'm going to do that service. I have all these things I have to do. And then he doesn't let things interfere with it. He does it. I mean, there's going to be things come up. Sometimes plans have to change. As Prabhupada says, we have our plans and Krishna has his. But if it's, if it's up to me, like I have a choice, I can uh, uh, watch this movie or I can do what I originally had my plan on and this movie is interfering with my plan. So I don't bother with the movie. I do what I had planned. So this is uh, uh, the test. This is the test of the devotee or the test of the yogi or the test of self realization So everyone has plans. We all think I'm going to, whatever our job is even, I'm going to get this done, I'm going to get that done. And for Krishna, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get that done. I don't know what happened to uh, Gopal. I don't see him anymore. I guess he left. But, uh, you know, he, he shut off his, because uh, I had a plan for him tonight. I don't know if he did it. Did you get the trash tonight, Gopal? You did, see? He had a plan. He's a, he's a devotee. He controls his senses. He wanted to go out partying, but no, he went to the temple and he picked up the trash and he threw it out. And I'm hoping he did it in a very happy mind. <laughs> so we have a plan and we do it. We carry it out. You know, we, we have to do the ecodicy thing uh, tomorrow. And I'm sure that Deb and Manishi will, will, will do that. Even in spite of, uh, Dancing to Holly, Bollywood music. <laughs> Whatever, there's things interfere with our plans. Sometimes they interfere. So what we have to do is not let them interfere. This is my plan. This is what I'm doing. That's sense control. And how does that happen? Because you have your, your intelligence. And with your intelligence, you control your mind. And with your mind, you control your senses. You don't have your lower self controlling your higher self. You have your higher self controlling your lower self. Instead of having your senses, you go to a fair and at the fair, they got, they got these rides and they got this smelly stuff that smells good to eat. 
Then they got these so many things all over you, bombarded, your senses are bombarded. Now, of course, during the pandemic, we only got to just stay in our house and look at our computer or something. But there's still so many things to look at, even on the computer, actually, thanks to you know, Google, we can do anything, go anywhere. So it's it's not and and it's and it's even in reality it's just an illusion and and now it's even more of an illusion because it's just a flat screen TV you're watching, so it's all Maya it's all illusion but we have to have we have our plan, and we should have a plan everyone should have a plan on how we're we going to help Srila Prabhupada push on this movement how we're we going to help others become more Krishna conscious this is what we should want to do. We shouldn't want to uh, just even for just save ourselves. Who was it? Was it uh, Ramanuja or somebody was uh, was told this mantra that it's it's very secret mantra because if you chant it, you liberate, you you become you become liberated. And he just yelled it from the top of a mountain to, to, to everyone because he wanted to liberate everyone. You know, even though it's supposed to be a secret, and his guru told him. Don't tell anybody. But he thought if it's good, give it to everyone. So that's that's the uh, that was the plan. You know, he had a plan and he did it. So Prabhupada's plan was to spread Krishna consciousness to the English speaking people. And it wasn't even his plan, it was his guru's plan. So Indian people have learned English so they can hear this philosophy. <laughs> that was a joke. Don't get angry now. <laughs> But uh, but but he came and he and he preached to the English speaking people because that was his guru's plan. It was ultimately Lord Chaitanya's plan and Krishna's plan. And he came at the right time just to do that. So he had a plan and he stuck to his plan. And he and he he went beyond that original plan. That was his original plan. And then he spread Krishna consciousness in so many languages. He got his disciples to, to go to different countries where they spoke different languages. He had, uh, oh, what's his name? Shiva, Shivananda, he had him go to Germany and open a temple in Germany. And he had, he had uh, Sudam go to Japan. He had Brahmananda go to Africa. And now, I mean, uh, Shivananda knew German. He spoke German, so he can go to Germany and, and preach there. Uh, Sudam didn't know didn't know Japanese, I'm quite certain. But but he did do send people in different places. And then when you found somebody who spoke the language, you'd get them to translate the books into that language and, and spread Krishna consciousness, not just in English, not just in German, but in every place practically in the world so many places in africa so he had a plan and he inspired his disciples to try to fulfill them that mission and and everyone is his disciples in this con he's everyone's guru he's everyone's shiksha guru and we should we should try to please him so we have to have a plan. How are we going to do that? I mean, even just with, for us in Connecticut, we should have a plan of how we're going to spread Krishna consciousness in this area. You know, even just Connecticut. And now we don't have, we, even just in the greater Hartford area or greater New Haven area, wherever we happen to be, we should try to spread Krishna consciousness. And we should have some plan. How are we going to do it? And Prabhupada's plan was also his Guru Maharaj's plan to distribute books. This is the best thing. This, he said the books can be heard all around the world. The, the, it's the Brihat Madranga, the, the, the big Madranga that can be heard everywhere. The other Madranga, the regular Madranga, can, you can hear for a few blocks. That's it. So he wanted the printing press was the big, big Madranga. So this was his plan. So he said, if you ever get money, print books. Bhakti Siddhanta told Prabhupada. So that's what he did. So this he had a plan and he didn't let anything interfere. He was a very old man with so many problems, but he still didn't let it interfere 
with his service, with his plan. And it's interesting that he, he would work so hard, he'd fly all over, he'd go to so many places, and his disciples, who were all young in the 20s, were like wiped out, and he just kept going. He didn't stop, because he had this plan. So that's what a devotee, also a yogi, a real yogi would do that, and a self-realized soul would do that. So the test, that's the test. You're able to control the senses according to your plan. So most people, however, are servants of the senses and are thus directed by the dictation of the senses. So Godas, you know, Goswami means master of the senses. Godas means servant of the senses. Our senses tell us, wow, that looks really good. That must be tasty. Oh, I think I'll do it. I think I'll eat it. No, if it's all, if it's vegetarian, if it's offered, if it's offerable, and if it's offered to Krishna, then I'll eat it, and I won't eat anything unless it's first offered to Krishna. That's the devotee's plan. So some people, whatever their senses tell them to do. I saw once, I, I think it was in a newspaper. This man was arrested because this very attractive woman was coming out of a hotel and she was so attractive. He just couldn't stop himself. He just went over and he kissed her. <laughs> and, and this is of course in America, <laughs> but, and then he got arrested. But it, it was like, it's not, it wasn't his fault. He couldn't do anything about it. His senses got attracted and he just had to give her a kiss. <laughs> so he, you know, he was controlled by his senses. Whatever the senses want, he was his servant. He just did what they wanted. And he was a very good servant of his senses. He, he didn't care about anything. He just did it. So uh, most people, however, are servants of the senses and are thus directed by the dictation of the senses. That is the answer to the question as to how the yogi is situated. That's the answer. He's situated because he, he has a plan and he follows his plan and he doesn't let his senses or his mind interfere with his plan. The senses are compared to venomous serpents. They want to act very loosely and without restriction. The yogi or the devotee must be very strong to control the serpents like a snake charmer. He never allows them to act independently. Never allows his senses to act independently. That's, that's a real devotee or yogi. He never allows his senses to act independently. Just like serpents, they're like serpents. They want to go here and there, but he's a snake charmer and he controls those senses that are like serpents. There are many injunctions in the revealed scriptures. Some of them are do nots, and some of them are do's. This is the whole thing in a nutshell. Certain things you have to do, certain things you don't do. So you have to have a plan. I'm going to do these things I have to do, and I'm not going to do these things that I shouldn't do. And then you do it. You carry it out. Then you're the master of the senses. So unless one is able to follow the do's and the do nots, restricting oneself from sense enjoyment, it is not possible to be firmly fixed in Krishna consciousness. So that's the first thing. How is it possible when your mind is on this, and your senses are on this, your mind, it starts with thinking, feeling, and willing. You first think about it. Okay, a man sees an attractive girl, and he thinks about, hmm, then his feelings, wow, I have, I, this would be really nice. And, and then once it's in the feeling state, once it, then it's, uh, sorry, thinking, feeling, and willing. Once you're willing to do it, it's, it's too late. It's already, you're already doing it. So you really have to stop it as uh, nip it in the bud, in the very, very beginning. It's a bud, it hasn't opened up yet. Thinking, in the thinking process, you can stop it. 
once it comes to the feeling process, it's very, very difficult to stop. So thinking, feeling, and willing. So once it comes to the thinking, when I start thinking about it, say, no, I don't want to think about that. I want to think about you, Krishna. That's it. That's it. And if it's still something there, Hare Krishna, then you yell at your mind with, a, with the ma mantra as loud as you can. Everyone looks at you like you're crazy, but you know you're controlling your senses. <laughs> so that's what we have to do. Unless one is able to follow the do's and the do nots, restricting oneself from sense enjoyment, it is not possible to be firmly fixed in Krishna consciousness. The best example said herein is the tortoise. So there's lots of things you can learn from the dog. Chanaka Pandit said so many things you can learn from the dog. Here's what you can learn from the tortoise. The tortoise can at any moment wind up his senses and exhibit them again at any time for particular purposes. Similarly, the senses of the Krishna conscious person are used only for some particular purpose in the service of the Lord and are withdrawn otherwise. So we can be like the tortoise in that way. We can keep our senses within when we're not using them in Krishna's service and when there's an opportunity, then we use our senses for serving Krishna. So this is the example of the tortoise. I'll read the verse, we're not done with the purple, but I'll read the verse again. One who is able to withdraw his senses from sense objects. As the tortoise draws its limbs within the shell, it's firmly fixed in perfect consciousness. So when the senses go out and they see something they're attracted to, you bring them right back in. No, 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 you can't do that. You have to think of Krishna. Do I have to? Yes, you have to. <laughs> so the tortoise can at any moment wind up his senses and exhibit them again at any time for a particular purpose. Similarly, the senses of the Krishna conscious person, persons are used only for some particular purpose in the service of the Lord and are withdrawn otherwise. Arjuna is being taught here to use his senses for the service of the Lord instead of for his own satisfaction. Keeping the senses always in the service of the Lord is the example set by the analogy of the tortoise who keeps the senses within. Any questions, comments? Hare Krishna Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisance, Sarvas, Shri Prabhupada. Yeah, wonderful examples that you have given, uh, so, so many. Uh, different examples. Sometimes it seems um, refraining like tortoise may be easier, but really getting out and doing something for Krishna may be difficult um, than, than restraining. So how do we uh, motivate ourselves to do something? We can't restrain your senses. What will repression accomplish? That's like the, uh, you know, Prabhupada says the the man is like butter and the woman is like the, the frying pan. So when the butter goes in the frying pan, the butter can say, I'm not going to melt, 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 and it's going to melt. <laughs> so, so to just think it, you know, I'm not going to let my senses go, it's not enough. You have to engage your senses in a higher, in a higher engagement in devotional service, in serving God. If your senses are engaged, it's much more difficult for them to get overpowered. But, but just thinking about it, I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna do that. They ain't gonna do anything. I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. You know, it's just gonna change. You're gonna do it, it's useless. You have to have a higher taste. By experiencing a higher taste, you can give up the lower taste. Srila Prabhupada was so kind, he gave us so much service, more service than we can do. There's, there's definitely more than we can actually do. But that's this kindness. So we have no excuse for being in Maya. We can be engaging our senses and serving Krishna. And 24 hours a day, Prabhupada says. Now when we sleep, 
even when we sleep, if we're engaged all day long, every moment of the day, our senses are engaged in, in serving Krishna. When we sleep, that's what we're going to be thinking about. When you sleep, you think about what happened in the day. You know, that's what you dream about. So even then, but and anyway, even if in your sleep, you think of something else, okay, you got your sense gratification. <laughs> but in your sleep, you can't control that. But at least while you're awake, control that. You know, that, that's when you should control your senses. Forget it. When I, when I go to sleep, I'll tell myself, okay, you can go wherever you want. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> But at least while we're, while we're a, awake, we have to control our senses. And the best thing, there's no other way, you know, other than engaging those senses. And when we engage our tongue, it says that the mind can be controlled between two senses. So between the tongue and the ear, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We can control the mind. Then if we have another sense, we're looking at a picture of Krishna while we're chanting, then that's even, we can control the mind even more. So we have the, and then we can smell incense or flowers offered to the Lord. So we have another sense that's helping, it's engaged in the service of the Lord. So the more senses we can use to serve Krishna, then the, the, the harder it will be for Maya to take us away from, from that. But if we're just thinking it, that I'm not going to do it, that's useless. That you're going to do it. You have to, have, you have to engage your senses in a higher, in, in serving Krishna and serving God. Or else they're going to be get, again engaged in serving the senses of this body. So we have to do something practical. I mean, even subtly. You, you, might, you might be writing a book on Krishna consciousness. Your senses are engaged. You're not like, you don't have to be physically always moving around. Uh, Prabhupada's talked about how like, like the monkeys, they, you know, they're always engaged swinging from tree to tree and they have different she monkeys and all these different trees. And uh, that's not really sense control or renunciation. That's what he's talking about, renunciation. I'm so renounced, I just live in a tree. Or live under a tree, but then he has a, a girlfriend in every tree, you know. So that's the mon monkey renunciation. You know, you seem like externally you're so renounced, but you're not renounced. So we thank try you. to what? I said thank you for the practical tips. I wasn't even sure what you asked now, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I said sometimes that uh, refrainment seems easy, but positive engagement is difficult, but you kind of clarified that it's actually not possible to refrain without positive engagement. Right, right, right. It's just yeah. artificial. Yeah. Let's think of the frying pan and the butter. I'm yeah. not gonna melt. I'm not gonna melt. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna melt. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, you all know this. <laughs> <laughs> <That> happened. <laughs> Uh, contemplation about I'm not going to do it is is uh, as bad as contemplating on it and doing it, you know. So so the negative contemplation. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Thinking about it either way, negative. Yeah. Of course, it's probably better negatively because, oh, who was it who said that uh, when I think of my past sex life, my lips curl and I spit at the thought. Yeah, King Kuleshekara. That was Kuleshekara? Yeah. Okay, so that's better. I think it was. I think it was Yamanacharya. Oh yeah, Yamanacharya. Yes, 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 yes so Yamanacharya. Thank yeah, you very much. I didn't want to argue with uh, Sri Acharya. <laughs> Sorry, he, he's the Acharya, <laughs> but everyone else had no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're both. They're both in uh, Sri Vaishnavism, and they're oh, both. They were both kings. So I got confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, anyway, so better you think of negatively than positively if yes. you're going to think of it at all, but better not to think. If you're meditating on it in either way, of course you can meditate on it. If you, your mind goes on it, because even in that case of Jamunacharya, his mind 
thought about it. You can't help it. So what are you going to think? I don't want to think about that. I want to, you know, it's disgusting compared to what I got. I got Krishna. And now this junk comes in my mind. You know, we can, we can think like that. You know, I want Krishna. Jane Hare Krishna. I remember one time, uh, this is in the Boston temple when we were, I was a young brahmachari. And we have like 10 devotees in the bathroom waiting to use the shower and, uh, and one devotee, we, at that time, we put a tilak on in the bathroom. You shouldn't really put your tilak on in the bathroom, but at that time, that's what everyone did. So we, he, he's putting on his tilak and he's looking at himself in the mirror and he says, Maya, Maya, Maya. And then all the other devotees said, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> so... And it was a real good example, and it was natural. You know, he was seeing his body as Maya, but the devotees thinking just think of Krishna, don't think of your body. You can think of your body, how good it is, how bad it is. It's the same thing. Stop thinking of your body. We're thinking of yourself. You know, low self-esteem. People have low self-esteem. They, they, they. You should, you shouldn't, you shouldn't think lowly of yourself. You should just think of yourself less. Don't think less of yourself, just think of yourself less. You know, think of Krishna. So that's what we have to try and do. Stop thinking of ourselves. But somehow Maya, we don't even know, it's almost imperceptibly, it brings it back to us again. And us means generally this body. It doesn't even mean us, the soul, because that would be okay. Too. But it brings it back to us, the body, and how we can enjoy the body, even though we're trying. And it, that's where the example of your mind is your best friend or your worst enemy. In the conditioned state, our mind is our worst enemy because our mind is just keeps bringing it back to, to, uh, to, to our body, our senses. That's what our mind keeps doing, no matter what we do. Now, why does it do that? Because we wanted that. We conditioned it for many births. What's favorable for sense gratification? Let me know. Hey, this looks like a good thing, so favorable for Sanskrit. Thank you, thank you. Let me try and get it. Uh, so we did that for years now, not years, births, lifetimes, so many births. So now we want to change it. It takes a little uh, reprogramming. We have to continuously, when we, when we think of something we can enjoy because we trained our mind in that way, we have to say, no, I don't want that. I want Krishna. I want Krishna. And uh, there's yeah. a story where I think I've told this already, but it's a nice story, so I like it. Uh, Trey Arishi and someone else was, 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 uh, no, no, Trey Arishi told Srila Prabhupada that he's so selfish. He's so selfish. And Prabhupada said, it's okay to be selfish if you know who your real self is. So if you're seeing yourself as a spirit soul and what's best for you, the soul, that's perfect. Nothing wrong with being selfish. But if you're selfish because you think you're this, this body, then, then that's bad. Hmm. But to be really selfish is knowing what's best for the self and thinking of the self first. I mean, if you think of the self first, you, the soul, the best thing for the soul is to surrender to Krishna. So then you surrender to Krishna. And that ultimately brings the happiness for the self. So Prabhuji, in the, in the neophyte stage, it's kind of hard to distinguish uh, what is given by Maya and what is given by Krishna. Sometimes people may think uh, something that's happening is actually Krishna is doing it, or Krishna wants me to do this, or maybe someone is lusty and, and some girl shows up uh, who is interested in him, and they, then how does that person distinguish whether this is Krishna's plan or whether this is Maya's plan? Um, yes, there are certain times that you, you, it may be difficult. What, one thing you can do is you can consult senior devotees. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, there's this one, there's this beautiful girl, She's really attractive. She really likes me. 
I mean, she eats meat and she takes intoxication, but I know I could probably help her out in that area. Is it okay if, if, I, if we go out together? Sure. <laughs> 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 if you bring it to a devotee, they're going to tell them you're in Maya. It's just an illusion. She's just a Maya Devi. You've got to be nuts. <laughs> Knock them. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you know, so, but that's, that's when it's Maya. But sometimes even for Krishna, we don't know what to do. We have a choice for Krishna. I can do this or I can do that. I can serve here or I can serve there. Or I can do this particular service or that service. And for me, that is harder to know because they're both for Krishna. Neither of them are for you. And, and what I find that works with me is I don't care. I'm perfectly willing to do either one, whichever one you want, and be sincere about that. Then Krishna will let you know if you're really sincere. Or if, if he doesn't, you can also ask other devotees. But something like that, I I don't I I don't know if I just would accept with another devotee. If everybody's saying the same thing, I might accept. But you can talk to them, but you make the final decision. But they're both for Krishna. So and you don't know which one you should do. And you know, honestly don't know which is the best thing for me to surrender to you. Which one do you want me to do? I'm willing to do either one, but you got to tell me which one. I ain't got all day. <laughs> Thank you, I, Prabhu. Very, very I, perfect, excellent answers. Actually, I do have all day. That's all I have. <laughs> but I got to do something. So right now I'm going to start doing this one because I can't just do nothing. I have to engage in your service. So I'm going to start something. But at least if you let me know which one, I think the main thing is you have to be very sincere. And when I say sincere, I mean, mean it when you really don't care. I really don't care. I want to do whatever you want me to do. Doesn't matter to me. You know what's best for me. I don't know what's best for me. And, you, and you're sincere that you're willing to try whatever, they, whatever Krishna wants. And then I think generally he'll let you know. But Srinivas Acharya, I think he's telling you that you should stay here in the uh, Connecticut area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Now he heard it from you, so he must make it happen. <laughs> That's what he's telling me. I don't know what he's telling you. <laughs> I mean, everybody here, he's, he's telling me that same thing. <laughs> you got to stay here and serve. Yeah, but sometimes, I mean, it's not just where we serve, what we do. There's so many things. Or buying something, you know, like we're buying this temple, this new temple. I wasn't sure if Krishna wanted it, but then after some time, he let me know he, he did want it. So we got it. And I was even thinking it would be so much easier when the Prabhupada was here, we can just ask you the Prabhupada, should we buy it? And whatever he says, we do. That's it. It's so easy. But now Prabhupada's not here. We can't ask everything like that. You can also ask your, your guru if you're not sure about what service you should do. I mean, that's something you can do too. But I think the main thing is sincerity. If you're really sincere. You're not trying to cheat Krishna. You're not trying to, you know, there's that saying, uh, Drinking water under water while bathing on a fast day. Yes. <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. I want to drink. I'm not supposed to drink. I'm fasting. I'm not eating. I'm not drinking. So when I go under water, I'm taking a bath. Nobody sees anything. <laughs> the best thing to do on, on a fasting day, uh, if you're doing mid gel, is do a lot of ashmans. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going out of the temple, come back in. Oh, I got to clean myself. <laughs> you can fill it up, make, make a fist where you got a big hole. <laughs> <laughs> you can 
take Charnamrita on a fast day. Even on, <laughs> I think you can. Even on knee gel, you can. Yeah, three drops, they say. Yeah. Three drops, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if there's different size drops. <laughs> Put a big spoon on it, that should be one drop. <laughs> you have to have a cup to get the drops. <laughs> But this a cheating propensity is working. <laughs> okay, well, we only got a couple of minutes left. Any other comments or questions? Okay, so I guess well, uh, let's. Rasaraj, you don't have anything for us, do you? I do not have Prabhu. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so we can offer our respectful obeisances to all the Vaishnava devotees. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Very inspiring talk. Thank you, thank you. You one, two, three, four of you who put on your cameras, special thanks to you. And the others, thank you. Thank you a little. <laughs> okay. Omeo put his camera. Special thanks to him also. <laughs> anyway, I thank you all for, for coming. Hare Krishna, glory to Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Prabhupada. Yeah, Prabhupada. Hi, now people are putting on their cameras. I feel so great. <laughs> Hi, Radhika. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Christ. Thank you. Hindu, Jai, Hare Bull. Hare Bull, Hindu is always jolly. We can't hear you, you're on mute.